Welcome everybody back to Booster Motion, guys. And today, this is the top 10 most deadliest vehicles in the United States on the road right now. Its article is actually pretty insightful. But if you're part of the Booster Motion channel, guys, please hit that like button. Thank you guys for your support. And if you're new to the Booster Motion channel, I am Boost. I'm a car enthusiast, Nissan Infinity enthusiast, and I was just reporting the news. So guys, do not shoot the messenger. So this article is going to come from um, Copilot Search. And I'm super shocked in some of the statistics here because I thought this list would have different cars on it. But technically, I think I got some of them right. So let's hop into it. The top 10 most dangerous cars in 2023. Even though this article is, is pretty much marked for January 12th of 2023, it just started. So they're taking old statistics. So I hate when articles have this because they're just updating it. Anyways, so what is the first car? Now, the first car, I believe it should be the top 10, the top 10 worst, most deadliest car. And it is the Ford F series, 4150, 250, and 350. Now, they're saying that in 2014 to 2018 had about a 10 of uh, almost 11,000 fatal crashes. 11,000 guys. That is a lot because we're sitting there thinking these are people who died. Behind the wheel of this car. The 450 is the most popular vehicle of any kind in the U.S. A distinction that it held for many years. But along with its stable mates, the larger 250 and 350, the F-150 accounts for more fatal accidents than anything else on the road. Between 2017 to 2019, the 450 alone has the most number of fatal crashes in five states, guys. Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Nevada, and Utah. No wonder it tops the list as the most dangerous cars or pretty much automobile. So, guys, yeah, I live in New York City, so I do see a lot of people who have 4150s. But whenever I leave out of New York City, it's like the 4150 is the Camry of of the rural area. It's just standard. Like in, New, in the cities, you'll see a bunch of Camrys and Accords. But outside of it, the 4150 is like just as popular or even more popular. Who would have ever known a, a, a six-cylinder, eight-cylinder pickup truck, dual cab, will be so popular? It's like a fifty, sixty thousand dollar truck. All right, next, Chevy Silverado guys. They had about seventy-seven a hundred deaths. The Silverado has consistently taken a backseat to the Ford F, -Ser F uh, series in terms of sales, and the same it could be said when it comes regarding crashes. Curiously, the Silverado lead led to more fatal accidents in Arkansas and Vermont than any other vehicle. On a rel on related note, according to the study on autoinsurance.org, the Silverado ha has a distinction as the most accident-prone vehicle in 30 states compared to the Ford in only five. Hmm. Okay. Three. Honda Accord. See, I was just talking my nonsense about Honda Accord. They have about uh, 5,000 fatal crashes. It's not about pickups when it comes to fatal accidents. As every popular Honda Accord ranks as the third deadliest vehicle on the list and the worst passenger car when it comes to vehicle fatalities. Even though the Ford sells more than three times more F-Series vehicles than the Honda Accords, the Accord accident data shows that 0.65's occupants are killed in fatal accidents involving this vehicle. That's about 50% higher than the Ford F-Series. And in six states between 2017 and 2019, Connecticut, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, and Rhode Island. So, yeah, if you got a Honda Accord and you're in your states and you get an accident, it sounds like you may die. That, that, that kind of sucks. And, I mean, they, they also compare it to how much units were sold in America. So, out of 20... Well, that unit sell means how much the unit, how much of those cars they sold in one year, and they're just pretty much combining it. So, it even though we sit there and think about statistics, there's probably millions of these cars on the road. It's still they're still accounting for how much deaths of deaths that have has happened. All right, next, Toyota Camry, forty seven hundred deaths. Wow. And I'm going to go fast forward through this. In 2017 to 2019, the camera scored the most fatal incidents in Massachusetts. Now, I don't know what they're killing in Massachusetts. Were they running into trees? Raccoons? I mean, Sasquatches? I mean, listen, what are they hitting into? Like, how would they get into fatal accidents? Come on. Like, there's a lot of grass up there, guys. Come on. What are you doing? Five. Ram pickup truck. So, basically, the top five has already included... Three pickup trucks and two 
family sedans. Hmm. So Ram pickup truck has about 5,800 5, deaths, <coughs> while the Ram pickup involved a high number of fatal incidents by 5,800 during the study. It also has the lowest number of occupant fatalities, though, at 0.43, among the most dangerous cars based on auto insurance. The Dodge Ram pickup truck is the most accident-prone in Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Wyoming. This is... These statistics are so skewed because a lot of these places that they're naming is usually where the demographic of people would have these type of cars. Like, if you would have said the 4150 is really deadly in New York City, I'd be like, whoa, how? Like, it, it's not that popular. And where they, you know, but it's really wherever the demographic of people are picking a specific type of car for the specific duty they need it for. So, Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Wyoming, it makes sense. I doubt I see... A Honda quote on back roads, you know. Okay, Honda Civic now. This took them long enough. Notice that they're talking about pretty much da daily drivers. It's super weird how Americans either get a four-cylinder or six-cylinder sedan or a two- to four-seater pickup truck. Weird. Um, They had about 3,400 deaths. And their occupants kill per vehicle is actually .70. That's actually... High, yeah, a fatality rate of 0.70 occupants per daily accident exceeds Ram pickup truck by more than 60 percent, and the Ford Mustang only surpasses it by 0.7. So, I guess Mustang is probably next. Between 2017 and 2019, there were more fatal accidents in a Civic in California and Vermont than any other vehicle in that state. So, if you got <laughs> once again, what is going on in Vermont that you guys are crashing Civics? It don't make sense. Why are you crashing Civics in Vermont? What do you hit into? Snow? Like, it don't make any sense. In California, people, I, sorry, my Cali guys. I get it. All right, next, Toyota Corolla. Pretty much the, the Toyota Civic. Same thing, uh, 3,400 deaths. Toyota has some... Um, uh, the uh, Corolla has a high fatality rate as 0.64, which stems from its smaller size. Okay, cool. Ford Explorer, despite the abundance of, of SUVs in the market, they have 3,300 deaths, fatalities. There's only one of our on this list, the Ford Explorer. The vehicle is no stranger to hazardous situations following its Firestone tire debacle in the 1990s. Um, despite it being a larger vehicle, Explorer's fatality rate is 0.61, approaching, approaches that than smaller cars. But they're saying between 2014 and 2018, so I don't know about the newer ones, but... They have a high fatality rate. Nissan Ultima. I think Nissan Ultima should be like at the top of this list too. Because I see Nissan Ultimas going full max effort on the highway all the time. Like if the speed limit is 50, they're trying to hit 110. Like they, at stoplights, they want to race. It's like the Nissan Ultimas don't care. Like they're all, most of them were clapped up. Sorry, sorry Brad for right. I know you're. Used to be a Nissan Ultima driver, but and also I like Nissan Ultima SERs and, and manual ones and the V6 models. But anybody that has a baby mom and they got a clapped out, yo, Nissan Ultima man, I really hate you bastards. And I hate that CVT just as much as I hate you. Um, they have about 3,300 deaths, uh, their kill ratio is pretty much 0. 0.60. And the Nissan Ultima remains a worthy competitor to the Honda Accord and Toyota Camry with the comparable features and equipment. Um, and this fatality rate is 0.6. And lastly, it's going to be GMC Sierra. Once again, I think it's another pickup truck. The final entry on this list is the 10 most dangerous cars capped off with GMC pickup truck, a clone of, it, of, of its corporate cousin, the Chevy Silverado. Between 2017, the Sierra used to be responsible for more fatalities in Maine but was recently eclipsed by the Chevy Silverado. Once again, what in Maine? Maine of all states. What what popular thing you know happens in Maine that people need to be out here driving reckless and clapping out um that car. I, I, it don't make once again, it don't make any sense to me. So guys, um let me know if you uh, agree with this list, honestly. I'm actually quite shocked and I really don't believe him, but you got to go off the statistics, and statistics is logical. So, and as I said a little earlier, I can see why some of these cars are where they are because people in inner cities and with more highways and more congested areas usually get the eco sedans, you know, and people who live more in a rural area, you get pickup trucks. It's just 
the natural culture of things, and I continue to notice that. All right, so I'll say that, guys. You have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you for banging with your boy Boost today. If you liked this video, hopefully you liked it. If you didn't like it, well, you know, comment below. Tell me why you dislike it. Also, watch a couple of the videos, and if you enjoy it, then you can subscribe, hit the bell notification, and hit all. Otherwise than that, guys, you can add me at Boost Motion IG Facebook. Also, send me email at BoostMotion at gmail.com. Otherwise than that, guys, I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Thank you.